And the prayer and the national anthem have uh, now been played by our Tabor College pet man. I'm Ron Ham, and joining me today in the booth, 1983 graduate of Tabor College, Bob Hebert, all conference defensive back from 1983. And if we reference things from 40 years ago, now you know why. <laughs> Welcome, Bob. Yeah, thank you, Rod. It's really a pleasure to be up here to see the Blue Jays play today and uh, look forward to a great contest. We're going to try to uh, kind of be like the Jim Nance, Tony Romo that you see on CBS, but uh, if we fall short of that, we're sorry. Uh, we're just going to do the best we can and uh, go over uh, a little bit of uh, Tabor College, Bethel College history here. And uh, I did a little research before the game. In the last 15 years, Tabor holds an 11-4 to edge, Bob, over the Bethel College Threshers. And I know that might be shocking to you coming from the, the, the late uh, – coming. Being in Hillsborough, growing up in Hillsborough, knowing the history of Tabor College football, that might be a shocking stat to you. Well, it certainly talks to the turnaround that Mike Gardner has done with the program, and he's provided solidity and consistency, and that's a great thing for Blue Jay fans. I remember playing games in the 80s, and they were great contests, and uh, I think we fell short a couple times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't go back to look at uh, the records of Tabor College for the last, uh, well, I think, I guess we're going on 50 years of football at Tabor. But uh, there were some lean years, let's just say that, and uh, leave it leave it there. And you're right, when uh, 2000 hit and Coach McCarty came to Tabor College, and then uh, about, a, I think, a year later brought in uh, this uh, kind of little-known defensive coordinator, Mike Gardner, uh, the fortunes of Tabor College football turned around completely. It might be what some people say the greatest turnaround in NAIA college football history, equivalent to what Bill Snyder did at K-State. That's absolutely true. He's done a great job. He's been a model of consistency, and he's, he's done it the right way, and that's nice to see. Absolutely. The other stat that I did look up, and I think uh, this is also a telltale sign of what Coach Gardner's done at Tabor College with the football program, Tabor is now on a 10-game win streak. Tabor has won 10 in a row against Bethel over the last 10 years. I mean, Obviously, over the last 10 years or 15 years, they were 11 and 4, but 10 in a row. And so, you might guess with Bethel College coming in 7 and 0 in the conference, 8 and 0 overall, and Tabor not experiencing the success they've had uh, this year as, as compared to what they've had here in the in the last five or six years, you can guess Bethel's pretty excited today. <laughs> I, I can imagine so. From what I have gathered, they uh, from our production meetings we've had last night, they look like they have had a strong start to the season last fall. And I'm returning all their guys are here this spring, and I believe they are amped up and looking for some revenge, perhaps. 
So there is some good news here before we get started. And uh, if you look at the stats on paper, that's not necessarily the good news. But uh, Tabor College on paper versus Bethel College on paper looks like an, an inc a huge... Uh, Tabor just comes in as a huge underdog. And uh, the good news is, though, that Bethel's last outing against, I believe it was Friends University back in November, they committed 12 turnovers and kept Friends in the game. So let's just hope that uh, Tabor's defense can uh, create those kind of turnovers and uh, their offense now with a, a new quarterback uh, without Trey McGee will uh, be able to do something and capitalize on those turnovers. Looks like we're ready for a kickoff here. and. Uh... It's, it's Gary Sanbo at Bethany College, the great offensive quarter, and used to say, time to rev up the old canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Tabor College receiving and can't handle it, and uh, re deep returner couldn't handle it. The ball goes off his shoulder pads and goes out at the two-yard line, so not probably what uh, Tabor College was hoping for early on here in this contest. Bethel College wearing all white, Tabor wearing all blue. Wind uncharacteristically is out of the east as we see a little bit of the replay there and uh, so Tabor is going to be moving left to right on your television or computer screens like I said dressed in all blue and with a new quarterback and also with a new running back and so we'll try to go through some of the, the starters here as we go but Number 14, Trent Quinn, a six foot 195 freshman, redshirt freshman from Mineral Wells, Texas, by way of Cisco College, will assume the quarterbacking duties. New in the backfield, number four, Andre Renteria, 5'11, 200 pound junior from Lakewood, Colorado, Black Hill State. Tamper coming out, wanting to throw first down. The ball's knocked away, and I believe Bethel's on it. No indication from the white hat yet, and they're calling that incomplete. That is fortunate for Tabor. <laughs> Very fortunate. <laughs> Lining up in a uh, ace, what I would call an ace or spread formation, and a single back, and attempting to throw on first down from their two-yard line from, out of the end zone. From the end zone. From the end zone. All right. I, uh, yeah, interesting. And uh, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say we're going to see a running play here. <laughs> Now we got a tight end. Two tight ends. Single back. Good run there by Renteria. First run of his career at Tabor College. Gets it out past, I believe, the first down marker, but I haven't seen an indication yet. It's going to be really close. It could come up to third and one. Third and one. So nice play by Tabor College there. Renteria, like I said, transferring in. At semester and eligible to play, the, the COVID rules apply uh, for this spring football season. It's kind of a strange deal that we're playing football in the spring, although the weather outside today seems like more of a fall day. Yeah, the tight end on the did a nice job of sealing the edge, and he made a nice run. Ball came out again. Bethel picks it up, scoops it up, and scores on the fumble. So it looked like a high snap to to Quinn in the backfield and couldn't get the ball down into the running back's arms. Were... There is a flag in the end zone. That is after the touchdown. The uh, linebacker who picked it up and scored spun the ball. A beautiful spin in the end zone <laughs> with the ball, but there was a yellow flag for that, uh, um, perhaps on sportsmanlike contact. Yeah, you know, I'm afraid those kind of uh, celebrations that you see in uh, professional ranks don't quite go over so well in the NAIA, and that's probably what we're going to see here. So an unfortunate turn of events, you know, uh, Tabor escaped. Tabor escaped a big one there by that incomplete pass in the end zone. Uh, it could have been called a fumble. It was called incomplete. That was a, a break for the Blue Jays. And then uh, the nice nine-yard run by Renteria. And now this fumble here, and uh, Bethel picks it up, scoops it up, scores. And I think the penalty in the end zone for unsportsmanlike conduct will be on the kickoff, it'll be marked back on the kickoff as Bethel sets up for the extra point. Extra point is up and good. We'll take a quick time out here as Bethel on the board early. 7-0, we'll be back in a minute. 
Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. We're back here at Joel Williams Stadium. Rod Ham and Bob Hibbert bringing you the action today. One minute gone in early in this first quarter. Bethel College able to get a, a turnover fumble by the Blue Jays and score defense scoring their first touchdown for the Threshers once again Threshers 7-0 in the conference 8-0 overall it's wet today Rod it's windy today I think this is going to be a, a, the type of day where you want to control the ball avoid turnovers and uh, we'll see if the Blue Jays can uh, correct that after this first series and uh, not, not shoot themselves in the foot this way yeah, and so Tabor College with a new quarterback, Trent Quinn, uh, working in the backfield with a new running back. So, not have had a lot of, they haven't had a lot of time together. Now we got the deep back, bringing it out. Number 12, turning the corner. Almost gets around the corner, doesn't really ever get brought down, gets it to the 42 yard line, and Tabor's offense will regroup, hopefully, and uh, come back out here on the field and. See if we can move the ball on the Bethel defense. Great field position, starting from our 42. See what they uh, see if they go to the spread formation or come back with that one tight end and one back. We would call that 11 back in the day. Number 12, Hudson Adama on the return there, freshman wide receiver, six foot 180 from Fort Worth, Texas, Eastern Hills High School. And Tabor College now is going to have quarterback Quinn under center. Two tight ends, two backs. Hand off inside. Still going. Look, look to be... Fullback. Yet to find his number on my depth chart. Short gain there by the Blue Jays. Brings up second and long. Almost uh, looks like we got a yard on that one. Different personnel. There are trips left. Yeah. With a uh, split into the right. Bethel with a three man front. Pass out to the outside. Nowhere to go. It's a gain of four. Short. <laughs> Yep, short pass there to Andre Renteria, the running back who had split out wide for the Blue Jays. It'd be third, yeah, third and six. I believe that yep. this will be another passing play. Third and six, ball on the 46 yard line. Bethel College once again up quick on the Blue Jays, 7 0, wearing all white. Blue Jays all blue with the gold helmets. Twins to the left, single receiver to the right, two in the backfield. Two in the backfield. Max protection, he's got a shot. Oh, he had, looked like he had his receiver open, overthrew him a little bit. That'll bring up fourth down, and the punt team will come on for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Rod, they had that split formation, or uh, kind of a spread formation with two, ba two backs and a, a bit of a fade down the right sideline, just let up too much. Number 15, Tyson Nanette was the intended receiver, 5'11 wide receiver out of Beaumont, Texas. Brings in the punter, Joe Chiavetta, 6'3", 175-pound oh, High snap. Punter. Almost blocked, got it away. <laughs> Gets it away. Returner for the Threshers falls down, and Tabor will down it at the 20. So... Like you said, the field is wet, the ball's wet, 
It's a little foggy outside. It's spring. It's spring football. <laughs> These teams have been uh, maybe practicing together for, I don't know, maybe, I mean, well, we had a cold spell here. Like, you know, you're from uh, Chicago, so <laughs> you know about our cold spell we had here. But we had two weeks uh, where it was uh, almost impossible to be outside doing anything. And so these teams have not had tons and tons of practice. So now the Threshers will line up here with Zach Esau, number 19. Their quarterback, senior six foot 195. That is an option look, Rod. They kind of want spread formation, two tight ends or two wings, put one in motion and end up really with two people in the in the backfield and so kind of a read option to the right side of the field. They are a 100% read option team. They throw the ball 10 times a game, usually one of those for a touchdown. The rest is run, run, run. A little pitch outside. This time Tabor snuffs that out. Good job out there. If I had binoculars, I could tell he made that tackle. Looks like 23 or 33. Hard to pick up the number. Like I said, it's just a little bit foggy here. I think it was 23. Gunnar Reese. It's an interesting play, Rod. That last play, they had everyone bunched in tight, the Threshers, and uh, put a man in motion and, and, and took it out wide. So now they're, they have that kind of bunch formation. I wonder if they'll come wide to the left here. To the, to the field side. Here they come. Hand off down the middle. Tabor's defense is right there for the stop. Very stout defense up the middle. As the crowd, you hear a little bit of the Tabor crowd maybe with the camera outside picking up a few people that are uh, here braving the cold today. It's a great defensive series by the Blue Jay defense. Maybe they can calm down a little bit here and get the offense on track and uh, show us what they can do with this next uh, opportunity with the ball. Coach Gardner has been uh, getting C.J. Hill trained in his defensive <laughs> ways for many years now here at Tabor and C.J. Hill has just done a fantastic job with the defense and that's an example of it right there as Bethel downs the punt at the 30 yard line and Tabor College will take over. A great stop and uh, so like you said, if Tabor can keep from shooting themselves in the foot, we gotta go, we got a ball game here. And uh, we'll take a quick break and be right back with uh, Blue Jays back on offense. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. We're back here as you're listening to some of our sponsors, which we appreciate for this broadcast. Uh, that play there goes for almost, it looks like six yards, Bob, and a little inside handoff. A different formation from the Blue Jays that time. That was, what, what, you know, kind of a, a slot left and, uh, yeah, some, some, some run action up the middle of the field. Same, same formation here, it looks like. This time, that last handoff was uh, Javion Curry, Jav Javon Curry, who leads the Blue Jays in rushing this year, 5'11 freshman from Sulphur, Louisiana. This time, the ball handed off to Andre Renteria, and he lost yardage on that play, and it'll bring up third and five, I believe. Third and yep, third and five, maybe a maybe a long five for the Blue Jays. A long five. Single back, more spread out. The J Blue Jays are, are more in the spread formation. Pass is made and caught. Now it says, uh, now the Bethel players say dropped. What did the officials say? Yeah, it looks like the <laughs> officials, uh, <laughs> they're agreeing. I'm afraid the officials agreed with the Bethel players. You see the replay there and the Bethel defensive player had his hand in there and it'll be fourth down now. And the Blue Jays will have to punt. So that was a first down. If he could hang on, a nice, right. a nice play, a, a, a slant from the left side of the field over the middle, and 
well defended by the Bethel defense. It looked like Quinn put the ball right where he had to and just uh, defense was there too. Yep. Chiavetta back to punt. This time he keeps it low and away from the punt returner. Now it gets a good roll out of it and Tabor will down it about the 27, 28 yard line I believe. As Bethel College comes out quickly, their offense ready to roll. And I'm just saying during that quick break, Bethel College offense uh, averaging 368 yards rushing on the season after eight games. That's uh, that's a lot of yards. Yeah, that's a lot of ground yards. Only putting up, uh, I believe, uh, right at 100 yards passing. But if you add those up, that's uh, 468 yards total offense. So Tabor College defense and uh, defensive coordinator C.J. Hill have their work cut out for them today. Looks like Bethel has a single back. They run some type of a set, usually some type of a wing, a wing back over the, next to a tight end. And he has either been at the snap or a little bit of motion move, movement. And they end up with kind of two backs to run this option attack. Now they are. And there's something going on with the officials right now. Uh, with uh, athletic director Marty Zemer on the sidelines. Zemer on the sidelines. Not exactly sure what was happening there. If there was a clock malfunction. But uh, looks like we've got it all figured out. And we're ready to roll here. Now the Threshers are spread to the left side, to the field side of the field. Single back. Caden Christensen, number one, single back. Esau under center, in motion. Gives off to Christensen. He's a fullback type. 5'11", 215 pounds, a freshman. It's a nice gain for first down. Threshers have good... good uh, Short yardage, not too long yardage for a second down to get their first down. Once again, looked like kind of a doubles formation with Christensen being the lone setback, and it looks like he's going to get across the 40 yard line or right at the 40. They're going to mark him down just across what he needed for a first down. It was really close, it looked like, but uh, and Bethel's ready to go again. Another handoff to Christensen. This time he's loose. And Bethel College is uh, not wasting time right now. And uh, look at them right now. They're going hurry up offense. That play was between guard and tackle right up the middle. And they are and that, not a, I think that was a, he's reading a little. This could be pretty, yeah. that looked pretty term. <laughs> that looked pretty term. He's not reading that look, but there is an option look on every one of these plays. They bring that backside, what I'd call a wing back in a lot, you know, trailing the play and they end up with someone they could pitch the ball to, but this has not been reading. He is predetermined handoffs those last several plays. And that might have been, uh, those may be predetermined by the head coach, offensive coordinator, or whoever, just saying, hey, we're just going to, hey, let's quit they, messing around. Let's just pound the ball for a while and yeah, see what happens. And Until uh, they can stop it, they'll keep doing it. It looks like probing the middle of the Blue Jay defense. Player for the Blue Jays. Able to come off the field on his own. Looks like it could be just a uh, ankle injury. Might need to go over to the training table and get a little tape on. But uh, nevertheless, big man inside for the defense. Number 99, Jawan Thompson, six foot, 300 pound junior out of California. Now Bethel fakes the. They're in a spread formation. Spread, yeah. spread formation, but they have. Well, again, what I would call kind of two wings. Now they're bringing them in tight. This, this split out guys are coming in tight. Single back. Tabor with only three on the line. Esau back to pass. Let's it fly. And it's knocked away. Nice job there. At the last minute flying in. And it looks like uh, Wyatt Lepke who makes that play. You see the replay here up on your screen. Wyatt Lepke at the last minute gets a hand in there. And Wyatt Lefke has moved from uh, linebacker to defensive back corner for the Blue Jays. That was a great play. The Blue Jays had three men around the receiver, and as you said, Rod, Lefke came in and swatted that away, making a nice play. 6'3", 180 out of Visalia, Visalia California. Third and 10. 
There they pitched the ball. Ooh. Defended <laughs> very well by the Blue Jays. A, a nice hit. Gain of two. Good job there on the hit by number 26. They're going to go for it. And Bethel. On their 40. So a risky play here by the Threshers. Fake the. That's oh, motion. Now we got motion. Two guys moving at once. That's going to back Bethel up five yards. The A back moved in motion, and then one of the other players also jumped, uh, had a little uh, twitch or something there, and uh, referee's right on top of it, and that's going to bring the punt team in. That's right. That's like an H. I guess you would call that an H back. The, 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 well, the uh, there, right? If you've ever watched Air Force Academy, this is similar kind of offense. offense they run, very similar to that. Yeah, exactly. That's a nice punt. A little pooch punt does the job. Very, very well played. Pistol College defense runs out onto the field as their punt team goes off, and Tabor College offense huddles on the side. So lots of time has elapsed there since that uh, uh, auspicious start that we we got off to. Auspicious. That's yeah. a, that's a good term. And just. Just FYI, coming into the stadium now, Bob, this will be a sight for, for your eyes. Uh, Doc Richard Kyle coming into the stadium uh, dressed in red, inappropriately, or inappropriately <laughs> dressed in red. <laughs> now, I'm sure he's not, uh, it's not burgundy like Bethel. And uh, here we go with the pitch to running back for Tabor College. Number 24 escapes the first tackle, Jav Javen Creary. Escaped that first hit and made positive yardage, but uh, Coach Doc, we just we just right. called him Doc Kyle, and uh, longtime defensive coordinator at Tabor was your defensive coordinator, and uh, and I coached with him, and appropriately yeah. he you know was this a uh, uh, well-renowned history professor, and I see that he has a sweatshirt that says Paris on the front, and yeah. as you know, he traveled <laughs> extensively in Europe during his teaching yeah. career yep. at Tabor every year. Second down, and I thought Tabor got positive yardage on that first play, but I guess they escaped negative yardage and made it back to the line of scrimmage. Bethel doing some blitz. weird. I think I think Bethel's offside. They were yeah. They had an outside blitz, and they perhaps just got a little too uh, time that just not quite right. So it'll be second down and five after this penalty offsides on Bethel, but they're trying to time that snap. And they're not down in the, the three and four point stance. Are you noticing that on their defensive line? They're uh, standing up, standing yeah. up, and uh, even starting from two yards back and trying to time that snap. This time it backfired on him. Taylor continues to to uh, attack Bethel's defense with with a spread formation. 549 left in this first quarter. Tabor down seven. Would really like to get something going offensively here as Quinn is under center. Turns around, hands off. It looked like the handoff was to number four, Andre Renteria. Fighting for yardage and not really getting anywhere. It's tough going. Bethel is applying a lot of pressure at least two people blitzing they have a four-man front at least two people blitzing on that play so there is perhaps not a lot of respect for the passing game and they are going to shut down the run four-man front for the defense for the threshers and they've got the linebackers kind of faking coming and going yeah, and they're bringing everybody. everybody. Passes caught. Caught and first down. Yeah. Tight end for the Blue Jays bringing that down. Great call by the, if that was a, I don't know if that was an audible by Quinn or if that was a play that was called, but a great call because Bethel was bringing everybody there. And uh, the tight end, number 85, Jerron Usher, 6'4", 185, junior out of Riverside, California, brings it in, gets the first down, and I believe that's the first first down for the Blue Jays yeah, today. It's a great execution. Nice pass to a, as you said, maybe a hot receiver, but certainly full max pressure from the from Bethel. 
Same thing. They're sending a lot of people. Yeah, and there's a ball loose. It comes out maybe after the fact. Tabor able to pounce on it. Look like number 57. Left guard Lucas Santana able to sit on that when the ball kind of squirted out from the whatever was happening there. Loss of four though. Second and 14. Puts the Blue Jays in a precarious situation. Given the given the amount of pressure, it's wet, it's windy, and now they're in, you know, they got tough field position. Ryan Nelson, offensive coordinator for the Blue Jays, making the call here. Quinn goes oh back and pass. Oh. oh, and <laughs> that went straight to a Bethel defender who fortunately dropped the ball. Oh, that was six points. Yeah. Pass he didn't even move. That defender uh, for the Thrushers kind of sat just right there, sat didn't he? there and the yeah. ball, ball came to him. So that time Tabor escapes uh, near disaster and uh, we'll come back with third down and long. And I'm gonna, I've got to play here and it's going to be a fade pass long. And uh, they have a saying in, uh, in the passing game, long ain't wrong. <laughs> 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 kind of hard to get those long ones intercepted. <laughs> Long ain't wrong. That's, I like that. Let's see. Yeah, Three-man front. Quinn under center. Hands off inside. And we're going to just... Uh, we're just going to sit on this one for a while. Let our punt team maybe get us out of trouble here. Looked like the handoff was to number five. I'm not finding him on my depth chart. I'm going to have to search a little bit here. But it's that's what I thought I saw. It was a gain of three, Rod. And it will be fourth and eleven. Julian Blaine, a wide receiver, taking that handoff. If I'm seeing right, redshirt sophomore out of Chicago, Illinois. Your town. My town, Chi Town. Chiavetta with the punt. Oh. That's going to bounce. I think the Get bell on it. returner, I think he touched he it. He touched it. Oh, and my goodness. He is loses about 15 yards from where he touched the ball. <laughs> it looked like he was going to wave it off and get out of the way. The ball took a favorable yeah, Blue Jay see bounce. see the re replay up on our screen here. Go, so yeah. he reached out and it looked like he did touch it. Tabor, Tabor could have had a, about a 70-yard field differential there if he would have not been able to jump on that. Fortunately for the Threshers, he was able to get on it. But losing a big yardage there in the process... Where now Bethel takes over at the 20, Zach Esau under center. And he hands off inside, this time to number 10. Ooh. A big uh, bruiser for the Threshers. It's a nice nice gain for first down. You're right, this is the Air Force. This looks like yeah. the Air Force Academy. Who are watching? Quinton Harris Miller. Uh, I, uh, it can't be right. He's not listed as a running back, so... Chance Scurry. Chance. That's who it is. Yep. Six foot two twenty five at Ardmore, Oklahoma. So and he looks every bit of two twenty five. He's stout. He's a stout ball player. Single so, back. So Christian's an out, Scurry in and uh fakes there and right up the middle again to Scurry who gets across the thirty for a first down. This reminds me, Rod, going way back to Kansas Wesleyan. I don't know if you remember back in the early 80s, they would line up with three back, uh, like this triple I. And I they had, I do remember that. They had this in, unbelievable back, and they didn't have to do much other than give it to them between the tackles. And this, it's a little di different formation, but they have if, a, maybe the same result if they if, just run up the middle here. If my steel trap memory would work for me, I could even almost tell you his name, but I, I just can't right now. <laughs> Once again, scurry up the middle. It's five, six yards a pop. And just so you know, Chance Scurry has 672 yards on 143 attempts coming into this game today. Behind him, Cameron Harrison, 497. Then they have uh, Zach Esau, who keeps the ball sometimes, not today, 478 yards. Caden Christensen, who we saw in the last series, 373 yards. Mason Murray, 357. So they've got, they've got a stable of backs. This time Esau back to throw. Pressure on him. Get Flicks it. Gets it out there to number eight who stays in bounds. And he's going to go all the way. 
Oh, uh, we had it taunting again, yeah. perhaps. We it looked like we had a chance to bring that receiver down at the 30, and uh, the DB or the back 33 just did not. Wrap him up. Could have knocked him out of bounds. The out of bounds yeah. line is an extra defender, and, and, and I thought we were going to just knock him out yeah. here. We just didn't make a play. And he evidently tight, uh, walked the tightrope along this uh, sideline here. And now we've got a confab. So they're going to. They're actually, this is a new rule in NAI, Bob. I don't know if you know about this. But when you taunt before you get into the end zone, they bring it, they don't let you have the touchdown anymore. Okay. They bring it out and penalize you on top of it. <laughs> so it's a, you can see right here, he turns and starts taunting right there. Yep, right around the 10-yard yeah, line. Yeah, and you're, you're watching it right there. He starts taunting. And so they bring it out to the 10 and penalize you from the 10. And now it uh, takes the points off the board. So another break for Tabor as we go into the last minute here of this first quarter. Only down seven right now to the Bethel College Threshers. Esau under center. He's going to survey the field. Looks around. Spread formation. Could be changing a play. And we have a different running back. This goes to Christensen again who bounces off one defender and then goes in for about five yards. The offensive, if you just look at the line play, they are, Bethel appears to be dominating, their offensive line appears to be dominating the Tabor defensive front right now. Number eight, who caught that uh, little flick from Esau, Tanner Gallier, 6'3", senior out of Larned, Kansas. Could have had a touchdown on his, on, uh, on his record books, but uh, that one's going to be called back. Esau under center again. In motion, the A-back up the middle again, and it looks like Tabor or Bethel has kind of seized on that middle a little bit, and uh, it's almost time for Tabor College defense to maybe pull out the Spartan plug and <laughs> start going goal line defense for a while, seeing if they can stop uh, Bethel's B-back from uh, pounding us up the middle. That'll be the first quarter. We'll take a break here, and we'll come back as the teams will switch sides and go the other way and uh, Tabor College 0, Bethel Threshers 7. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Since 1962, the Eitzen Agency has specialized in insurance for churches, colleges, and faith-based ministries. As an independent insurance agency representing Brotherhood Mutual and other fine companies, they can find the right policy for you at the best price. For more information, call the Eitzen Agency at 800-375-2553 or go online to EitzenAgency.com. That's E-I-T-Z-E-N. I think this game that Esau has kept the ball on purpose looks like he faked to Christensen and uh, almost makes you wonder if uh, might, have, might have been a busted play <laughs> almost makes you wonder if he wanted to give it to Christensen and Christensen didn't take it and uh, Esau was kind of left to run with it so number 99 back in the game there after Hobbling off earlier, called for the face mask. He's back in the game, which is good news. That time just got his hands in the wrong spot as Esau takes 
The ball under center again with Christensen as the B back. Hand off to Christensen, and he's going to score, I believe, and he does, and that'll put Bethel on top. 13 to 0 with the extra point team coming in. Same same play, Rod. It is between the tackles. It's it's that B back, I guess you're calling that, and he is it is the Bethel line right now in control of the game. Right. And if it's working, why not? Why not just keep going to it? Why not? Keep, yeah, keep going. <coughs> Extra point appears to be good, and it is. That'll put Bethel up 14. The Threshers 14. The Blue Jays zero. We'll take another quick timeout here and come back for the kickoff. There's a new vibe in town. Experience it with our crazy fast internet speeds from our fiber backs network. Whew. Finally, a broadband connection that can keep up with you. Need a customized solution to power your business with phone, internet, or managed services? Say hello to Vive. We're here to simplify your life with technology that works. See how at vivebroadband.com. That's B Y V E broadband.com. It's time to turn your Vive on. We are back here at Joel H. Wayne Stadium in Hillsboro, Kansas, as the ranked Bethel College Threshers, 8-0 uh, overall, 7-0 in the KCAC, have now taken a 14-0 lead here early in the second quarter as they're set to kick off from north to south here in the second quarter. Big run back here by the Blue Jays would be nice. They have switched sides, but I believe that east wind is not going to matter. There's no advantage which which way you're defending today. It's a little bit southeast, but it doesn't seem to be a, a big difference. Kick a little bit short. Taken by the Blue Jays up the middle. There's some room, but quickly uh, closes up. And Tabor with great field position here. Let's see what they can do offensively against the Threshers. Looks like the ball is going to be marked about the 30 six yard line so that opens up 36 37 yard line that opens up the playbook for the Blue Jays not having been not being stuck in a hole first possession they were on their own two yard line they have a little more room to work Quinn under center be on offsides, a free play by the Blue Jays. That ball is going to be incomplete as Quinn was kind of running for his life. It'll be offsides, I believe. Bethel College uh, maybe encroachment or crossed into the neutral zone just a little early. Well, you'll take a first and five. <laughs> Any way you can get it. I'm going to say let's run the ball three times to get another first down. That would be nice. Keep keep the ball in your possession. Use some clock. Right. Looks like a quarterback keeper. And that's not going to go anywhere for the Blue Jays as number 22 for the Threshers and their their linebackers uh, looks like they're they're all up. I mean, when you see them, when you see the ball snapped, you got about seven guys coming to the line of scrimmage, and so that time Josh Seabolt, five nine junior from Cimarron, Kansas, in there to snuff that one out. Quinn had nowhere to go. They are not respecting the pass game. They are, like you said, there's a it's a four three, and those linebackers are up. They're flowing. <laughs> They're flowing and, and yeah, running downhill rapidly into the, to uh, to attack. Quinn under center barely gets the ball handed off. Renneria wrapped up immediately. Yeah, this is almost almost th basically man coverage and seven to eight man uh, pressure every play here. Looks like Bethel switching out some players, maybe going to a dime, a nickel or dime formation here with third, third down and about seven or eight to go. 
Lots of changes. Yeah, that front, you can see that looks like a three-man front. A three-man front, but only one, only the nose guard is down. Everyone else is up, standing up. Flag on the play. Flag on the play before it's, they're blowing that dead. They're going to call procedure on the Blue Jays, and that'll back them up a little bit more. Got a false start. That backs up the Blue Jays even further. So what started out at promising here at the 37-yard line, we got first penalty on the Threshers for offsides on the first down, so we had first and five, and uh, we've gone backwards now for... Or third and 12, third and yep. 13. Long pass here by Quinn, and holding Ooh. should be a flag. No call against the Threshers. A lot of contact there, Rod. A lot but of contact. But when you see a jersey, I mean, it's right in front of us, so we saw it in UCL, and I'm sure they're going to show a replay of it. Yeah. A lot. Of, yeah. <laughs> there's a hand. There's a, yeah, there's you a lot. You saw about of, a foot of jersey come out, and whether he would have caught the ball or not doesn't matter. It's still, it's still a foul. I mean, that still should have been called, and it was right in front of the official, which is... What's the strange thing about that? So yeah. Tabor College not getting the benefit of the doubt on that call. We'll have to punt again. Chiavetta back to punt for the Blue Jays. I would say, yeah, that was one that did not go in the Blue Jays' favor. High kick, fair catch being called at the 30-yard line. And we got a little extracurricular action going on. And that was number three for the first catch. Special teams player Trey Palmer, 5'10 sophomore out of Texas. As the Bethel College offense is back on the field now with the Tabor College defense, hoping to do something a little different here in this second quarter. Bethel has been uh, pounding the ball to their fullback or their B back. And now they have another one in, different than Christensen and Scurry. So now they're handing to hand off to number 48. Humble? Maybe, probably was down. I believe that's number 48 for the Threshers now in the backfield, or is that number 40 again? I can't tell. Almost looks like a. Is that contrast in defenses here? Bethel is applying max pressure. Tabor looks a little more bend but don't break with really five, looks like five defensive backs. Option, ball's down, and Tabor College might have a chance at this. Ball's still down. Go, and pick, Tabor picks it up. It looks like number 44 for the Blue Jays. Picks up the loose ball. And I think that's Riggs Robin, a 6'2 freshman from Wichita, Kansas. Picks up the ball for the Blue Jays. A big break there for the Blue Jays. Defense is doing their job. Let's see if the offense can do so as well. As Tabor picks up the ball at the 21-yard line now. And the crowd goes crazy. It's a pretty good audience out here tonight for a cold, blustery day here in uh, March. If you don't like the weather today, wait a couple days. You'll be 60. So it would be nice to see the Blue Jays control the ball, at least come away with three, starting from at the 21 here. A little bit different formation there, but Bethel, after a couple yard gain by the tailback, looked like number 24 in for the Blue Jays, Javen Creary. Picks up a couple yards. A little different formation by the Blue Jays. Quinn uh, in shotgun formation as opposed to under center. Curry comes out of the game. Thought he should have mad at himself. I think he thought he should have picked up more yardage than he did. Quinn down shotgun formation. He's going to pass. Pick. That's a nice play. Nice play. Five picks the ball off from or, or picks up that reception for the Blue Jays. 
But Bethel had three down linemen, three linebackers, the, all three linebackers blitz. It's leaving a gap, an opening, if you can hit that short five-yard pass, whether it's a hot receiver or how you're reading it. But there is there is space there, Rod, if we can control the ball, not fumble it, and stay calm and hit those those short passes over the middle there. They're, they're leaving, Bethel's leaving kind of some open space there if we can give the quarterback time to throw and, and catch the ball. And Julian Blaine with the reception there, and like you say, with Bethel linebacker just flowing so hard, there's got to be open space there. Once again, Curry comes back looking over the middle, and there's going to be a penalty there. Looks like pass interference it does on the look like, It does look like that. It looks like uh, Jerron Usher was trying to get to the ball, and he was being impeded by the Bethel defensive backs. Spot foul, they're going to place the ball, I believe, just outside the five-yard line. So Tabor College in uh, position here to get back in this ball game, down 14-0 with 10.34 left in the second quarter. Red zone offense, see what happens here. You'd like to come away with at least three, but a touchdown would be obviously preferable. Get us right back in the game. And that's right, a touchdown, you know, field goal in some ways for, oh, and this is... That's offside. <laughs> another penalty here <laughs> by yeah. the Threshers. And uh, I think that was one of those calls where the quarterback uh, really must have varied his cadence a little bit there because there wasn't just one Bethel defender coming. There was a couple or, or more. They're bringing the heat, though. You can, see, you can see what they're doing. They are applying max pressure. Not afraid to blitz this Blue Jay offense. That is, that is without a doubt. So that time, uh, Quinn, Quinn under center, probably doing a little bit of cadence uh, variation there, and uh, got Bethel to move. Handoff this time to Renneria. Renneria has nowhere to go. Is going to get pushed back about five yards from where he actually had started so I don't know that he lost yardage on that play but uh, no gain for the Blue Jays. No gain. Yeah, good spot by the by the officials. That, off, that penalty put us well, I guess half distance to the goal line. We were essentially on the what three? Three four no, yard line? We were at the five. five I think okay. We're down to the four now. Yep. Second and goal for the Blue Jays at the four-yard line. Quinn under center again. Now the Blue Jays going to a different formation here. High snap. Got by, picked up by Quinn, and he is, once again, he gets about the line of scrimmage, and he's just picked up by two or three threshers. Look like that play had a chance, and you're right. They're just, they just, they're not, the, 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 um, they're beating us at the line of scrimmage right now. Defense, it's, it's as simple as that. And the yeah. defense is playing the run. Yeah. And so once they see it's a run play, it's just... Uh, they're attacking. Yeah. They're in attack mode. Third and goal, and like you say, a touchdown here. Uh, Bethel defense gives up a field goal. That's a little bit of a victory for them in a way from where their uh, offense left them. And So we'll see what happens here. Twins to the left. Quinn with the ball. He's going to get rushed. Now it throws. And the ball is not caught there by the Blue Jays. It'll be fourth down, and we'll come in with uh, Joe the Toe Cannon for the field goal. <laughs> nice job of the quarterback escaping a sack. And yeah. They got a lot of pressure and uh, a nice throw, well defended, and we came up a little short. Number 16, Joe Cannon, 5'10", 205-pound sophomore from Newton, Kansas, will come in to do the kicking. Ball is up, and it's good. Tabor's on the board. 8.57 left in this second quarter. Tabor has gotten their first points of the game. Only down now 14-3. We'll take a quick break here and be back in a minute. 
is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. We're back here at Joel H. Ween Stadium in Hillsborough, Kansas. The fog was supposed to have lifted by noon, and uh, in some ways, I think it's gotten worse. Not quite Candlestick Park rolling in, but we <laughs> it, there is some fog, without a yeah. doubt. Tamer College team, kick team getting ready here to kick off to the Threshers. Turnover by the Threshers led to that three points by the Blue Jays. Hopefully, the defense can capitalize on some more turnovers here. It's a squib kick. Little bit, uh oh, little bit of a challenge covering the ball, but now there is no. So somehow the Bethel College return team able to pick that ball up, and then uh, I don't know if the. There's a flag. There's a flag on the field, so that'll bring this one back, hopefully. Not exactly sure what happened, but uh, Tabor defense pointing Bethel's way. Well, perhaps that holding call is what, <laughs> what opened that, that up for their, for their return man. All of a sudden, there was room to run. There's got a replay here. I don't know exactly where the hold took place, but uh, right there is one. They tackled them. Yeah. I think I got just tackled them. Yep. So Bethel College offense will start at the 20-yard line. Esau, again, under center, senior quarterback for the Blue Jays. I mean, Threshers. Or Threshers, yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hand off to the fullback, and he goes up the middle for about five or six yards. It appears to be number 48. For whatever reason, I'm not. I gotta go down to my roster here and figure out. Jarrett Delancey is what I've got here, a 5'9, 205 pound running back from the Bahamas. The Word of Life School in Wichita. Hmm. Another handoff to Delancey. Nice stop. Here's a big play coming up. Third and three. Blue Jays stop him here. And we get a hopefully decent field position. Bethel converts. And then could have some impact here with seven minutes left in the first half. Motion by the Threshers, and we're going to have a procedure, looks like a full start penalty. I see the hands rolling by the side judge, and uh, that means it's going to be a longer, a little, little bit longer play there coming up for the Threshers. <laughs> now the official said, that, did he say remains second down? It looks like it's third down. Well, it was third down. Yeah, I maybe I misunderstood him. Balls third and long, yeah. In any event. Balls on the 30 or 22 yard line, third and eight. As Esau is looking, looking around and uh, making it looks like he's making a call. Tabor's defense now falling back a little bit. Passing play by the Threshers going over to eight. Intercepted by the Blue Jays. Nice job there. Blue Jays doing a little high or. High-fiving there. It looks like number 21 
for the Blue Jays. And you see the replay here, Bob, on the on the screen here in our studio. Just great defense there, just, just stepping right in front of number eight for the Threshers. So another big break by Tabor College defense, giving the offense great field position again. So here we are, seven minutes and a half to go. We have a chance to score again, and this game is a contest. It's a contest now. Tabor has settled down, but if we can get seven points on the board here. James Lang, number 21, with that interception for the Blue Jays. Now as Quinn gets set up under the center, hands off to Renteria. Renteria stopped right at the, even behind the line of scrimmage, just a hair. With Bethel playing the run so hard, I'm just I'm just afraid Tabor's going to have to figure out some way to open it up offensively to try to get Bethel uh, to play a little bit on their heels. But right now, they're they're on their toes. They're on their toes. They are attacking. And, yeah, ma max pressure up the middle. We need... I don't know what we need. We need, <laughs> we need something different. And I'm, and, sure, and I'm sure they're working on it. The well, coaches and, are working on and it. And check out this formation here. You have uh, spread, spread formation. Spread with a tight end and four, actually three receivers to the left. Now motion to the right. Empty backfield. Oh, nice play. Looked like there was a receiver open there, but uh, I'm not sure he was looking for the ball at that point. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, either. Early in the, like you said, they've had a couple weeks of practice. New quarterback. But I like the call and I like the play. I mean, they have that, that, that can work. Third and long. Yeah, this will be third and it looks like at least 12 for the Blue Jays at their th Bethel's 37 yard line. Big play here once again. Four to the left, and they're going to keep all four there. And now they're going to run a little screen. wide receiver screen, and that's going to get them about back to the original line of scrimmage. And no punt team coming on to the field as of yet for the Blue Jays. So fourth and nine about the 34 yard line and it looks like right now with six minutes left and counting in this second quarter it looks like the Blue Jays offense is staying on the field. It would be a 51 yard field goal. I don't believe that's in the range of our Not kicker. even for Joe the Toe. <laughs> He's got a good leg. Just don't know if that's going to be uh, quite that much. And we're going to get a timeout, I believe, here by Tabor College. And I don't know if that means we're going to get a punt team or whatever, but we'll take a quick break with them and be right back. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Chiavata back to punt as Tabor calls a timeout and thinks about what to do with the ball and uh, I think wiser heads prevailed there and uh, punting and field position are probably key for the Blue Jays. High kick, short kick. Nice pooch punt. Oh, they did not play that well. Oh, but no, I think they, they got away with it. They got away. <laughs> there should have been someone on the goal line preventing that and we were chasing it yeah. and rather than... Then uh, position for it, but fortunately, a phenomenal play to down it on the three. Yeah, you watch this here. He had a ball hit the ground and take off rolling, and a really smart play there by I couldn't tell who it was, but a very smart play by was it Lepke? defensive player there to slap that ball back in. I think that's 13. Looked like it might have been Wyatt Lepke. It's alert play and made an athletic. Play to 
Here's some pressure from the Blue Jays. Up the middle again. It looks like Scurry with the handoff from Esau. He gets it out from about the two or three yard line. Gets it out about three yards to the six. Chance Scurry, tackled by Rick's on the carry. Bethel lines up quickly. They're spread. They have this twins look. It makes me think they're running. It, they're going to run it inside because they're trying to spread us out, create a little bigger space, and then just run it between the tackles. This time a fake handoff out. Pitch to the tailback, and he gets out for about 20 yards. Number five, Amandre Shumpert Street. It's 5'8", senior, 160 pounds from DeSoto, Kansas. Gets a first down for the Threshers now out to the 26-yard line. So about a 20-yard scamper. Now back to their bread and butter. Scurry inside. Gets about a yard or two and is pushed back. It's one of the few times I've played before where they've run that option look and actually pitched it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's often <laughs> st stayed with the, uh, the B-back. Did a little better job holding them second and eight rather than second and four or second and five, second and four. Almost to the four minute mark in the second quarter. Now another fake inside and a pitch outside. This time running back room to go again. And number 24 for the Threshers, Rudy Juarez the third, 5'11 junior, 185 pounder out of Brownsville, Texas. And he picks up about 20 plus yards, maybe 30 yards on that carry. And Bethel set up, ready to go again. He saw under center. They're not wasting any time. Hurry up offense. This time back to their uh, B back inside. Christensen, he gets about four, hey, probably about four hey, yards. And now you see how quickly you see how Bethel averages 368 yards rushing. They pound, 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 and occasionally they... They pitch it, and there's room outside when they've done that. Like almost a jet sweep. Yep. Another big run there by number five. A fumble. Shumpert Street. Fumble on the play, and I believe Tabor College has picked it up. Huge. And they did. Huge play. So, so I mentioned before the game, their last game in November against Friends University, which kept Friends in the game. 12 turnovers. I've never heard of I've never heard of that many rods. Well, there was uh, uh, and I heard friends has a pretty big offensive or defensive line, but I was, I've, I've heard their defense is pretty stout. But uh, 12 turnovers that and they won the game. Well, Bethel won, but with, it was with, but, it, but it kept with, but it kept with 12 turnovers, <laughs> but it did keep friends in the game. Uh, well, I guess that tells you how good Bethel is then. If they can <laughs> win a game with 12 turnovers, that's that is pretty amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Tabor's offense back on the field. Quinn in shotgun formation. Twins to the left, single to the right, fakes. One oh, way comes back. I love another. that action. That was nice action by the quarterback. Good job there by Tabor College. Coming out throwing on first down. Used his eyes and his uh, some action to the wide side of the field and then came back the other way. Found the receiver open. Receiver once again, Julian Blaine, redshirt sophomore wide receiver out of Chicago. Previous school, Santa Barbara. I didn't know Santa Barbara had football. Santa Barbara, I'm sure they have a surf team or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. <laughs> I've been to Santa Barbara once, it's beautiful. This time inside, handoff, Renter, uh, not Renteria. Thought it was for a second, it looks like Creary. Nice second effort, battled, first down, stops the, stops the clock as they reset. play good for another. Tabor College gets a first down. Curry bouncing outside, not going down with first contact. Be nice to see Tabor break something here. They're due. Game, game I think the McCurry must have Javen Curry must have got out of bounds and the clock maybe didn't stop. I'm not sure. They've got the clock fixed and they're now ready to go. Another play out to Blaine. Blaine breaks go. one tackle. 
gets almost past another. Now it looks like some little extracurricular activity there. <laughs> Play to the whistle stops. Wow. Well, Sure seemed like the whistle blows, I should say. <laughs> sure seemed like the whistle should have should have blown right there, but uh, you see the replay and you Oh, I guess it was just a little tripping, a little tripping there. No big deal. Yeah. To every college now moving the ball with short passes. It looks like they're doing a little misdirection on the outside here with one receiver going in, one coming out, and uh, motion by Curry. Nice pitch out to Curry. Curry's loose. Big gain for the Blue Jays, about a 15, 20 yard gain that time. Looks like 20 yard gain. Javen Curry, 5'11", 205 pound freshman out of Sulphur, Louisiana with a nice scamper. Nice blocking by the Blue Jay line. They're, they were able to sustain their blocks. Bethel still applying the pressure, pressure, but given all that pressure, if we get past that first yard or two, there is space to run. That was a long pitch from the quarterback to get it out to Curry. Oh. A little high snap. Looks like we've got uh, movement. Snap it fraction. So I'm not exactly sure what that means, although... Is that a double... What does that mean? Was there a little double clutching by the center that time? Trying to get... Maybe uh, I, I couldn't really tell in the replay either, but couldn't see it. He yeah. must have moved the ball a little bit before the actual snap. Either way, that'll back the Blue Jays up five. It'll be first and fifteen, but they're just past midfield. Just over a minute left in this first half. Tabor down fourteen three. Oh, Max! Max pressure by Bethel. Great play and call. T taking advantage of those blitzing, <laughs> there is room right behind that where those linebackers are vacating so much space that it's open. And Blaine again on the reception and getting a first down for Tabor. So you watch the replay here. He catches the ball about the 45, makes a tough run there, breaks one tackle, almost two or three tackles, gets an extra five yards after contact. Quinn under center again. We're airing things out a little bit now. Blaine with another play or another catch. Not a lot of reading going on with this Bethel defense. It, it is just a, bringing it. It's, it's a yeah, it's attack. And again, they're leaving. They are leaving. They are leaving spaces where if we can sustain some blocks, give a little time. There are there are gaps and holes in that Thresher defense. Tabor College moving the ball better now than they've moved the ball in the entire game. The problem right now is uh, watching the clock. 38 seconds left in this half. Quinn in shotgun. And we got a timeout. Tabor will take a quick timeout with them and be right back for this exciting finish to the first half. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. Ron Hamm and Bob Hewitt back here with you at Joel H. Wayne Stadium in Hillsborough, Kansas for this exciting finish of the first half. Blue Jays with the ball. Trying to get some points on the board here against the stout thresher defense. And the ball's That's a catch. caught at the 21-yard line. That's a nice play. Right on the sideline. Got the time by clock to stop. 
Tyson known it? That play took four seconds, Rod. First down, and we are on the 21-yard line. A nice, a nice spread formation and a nice, nice kind of a quick out. Tyson Nonet, 5'11 freshman, redshirt freshman from Beaumont, Texas. See if Bethel will switch up their defense a little. No, yeah. not, not at all. <laughs> Mac, Quinn, Max, Max, Max. Quinn pressure. drops back. That's We're pass gonna have interference. It. it should be pass interference. And then we have no call again. Even and the receiver caught the ball but caught it out of bounds. I, it's the same. It's uh, so confusing to me what is pass interference and what isn't. But maybe because the uh, Tabor receiver right there in the net got pushed out of bounds, had, though. He had stepped out of bounds almost oh. on his own. Maybe that's why, but. This official on this sideline is letting them play right now. I don't mind if they're letting them play as long as they let them play. Well, as long I, as it stays consistent both ways. You're right. That, that doesn't bother me. I'm not sure if it's the right call, but he's he's not he's not calling anything at this point. At this point, hops to the left, no net to the right. Blaine in the slot. Quinn drops back, and have to bear to get rid of it. And shoot. that was close. That was almost six. And Quinn took a hit. He, he, I mean, nice pass by Quinn, but he took a little bit of a hit there. There, uh, Bethel defenders were coming. You see the play right here, and and uh, he got he got knocked pretty good. If that pass, if he could have maybe got that pass off just a little sooner, or if he'd have had time to to throw a little bit, to wait a little bit, yep. and throw that a little longer, but he didn't have time. Almost a great play there. Third and ten. 24 seconds left in this first half. Oh, you got snap. Three seconds, two seconds. They're going to have to get a time. They barely got it off. And on. looks like it's going to be... I couldn't tell what happened It's a fumble picked up by, I believe, recovered by 58. 68? Fourth down. Time's running out. We're going to get a timeout with two seconds left. I think we're going to probably send in Joe Cannon for the kick here. 39-yard field goal. Is that in his range? Absolutely. Now's the time to convert. Really hoping the Blue Jays were going to be able to put uh, seven points on the board earlier in the in the. In the game, and now uh, here again, the defense for the Blue Jays. Remark. Uh, I mean, you're right. They're 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 giving up some yardage. Yeah. But look at the turnovers they produced. Yeah. Well, and, we had uh, the, we had the play in the end zone here on, on close to us in the side of the end zone that was really close to a touchdown, and that um, third third and long that was we had two shots here, Rod, that we were quite close to six, did not get it in. As the kick team is out there, and uh, Joe Cannon lining up for the Blue Jays to see if he can. It's about a. And we're going to get a timeout by Bethel here to freeze the kicker. Don't know if those are actually good or not. I don't know if they work or not. But uh, I guess why waste? Why take a timeout into half? So we'll have another short time out here. So Tabor College against undefeated Bethel hanging in there in this game. Thanks to uh, Tabor College defense creating some crucial turnovers. Well, it seems like we've calmed down to that opening series where we muffed the, uh, really muffed the, the opening kickoff and started from our two yard line. A turnover that led to a, six, a quick six points for the Threshers and now we've, we've, got, a, we've got a contest. And quickly throw up some. Look for some stats here at halftime, but uh, we're back here live, and Joe Cannon set up, sets up again for this kick right at the 29 yard line. Add the 10 in the end zone, 39 yarder. Blocked. 
Was it blocked? I believe someone got a finger on it. Could be. And that'll take us to halftime as Bethel College on top. Threshers, the undefeated Threshers, 14, Tabor College Blue Jays 3. Oh, yeah. This guy got the edge. Yep, and we'll be back in about 15 minutes for some stats in the second half. estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsborough or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Since 1962, the Eitzen Agency has specialized in insurance for churches, colleges, and faith-based ministries. As an independent insurance agency representing Brotherhood Mutual and other fine companies, they can find the right policy for you at the best price. For more information, call the Eitzen Agency at 800-375-2553 or go online to EitzenAgency.com. That's E-I-T-Z-E-N Agency.com. The Eitzen Agency, proudly supporting Tabor College Athletics for three generations. There's a new vibe in town. Experience it with our crazy fast internet speeds from our fiber backs network. Whew, finally, a broadband connection that can keep up with you. Need a customized solution to power your business with phone, internet, or managed services? Say hello to Vive. We're here to simplify your life with technology that works. See how at vivebroadband.com. That's V-Y-V-E broadband.com. It's time to turn your Vive on. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. I never expected to attend college. Next year, I'll be the first in my family to graduate. Hi, my name is Irene De La Rosa from Wichita, Kansas, and I'm a junior at Tabor College, double majoring in biology and exercise science. Outside of the classroom, I play soccer. I am the president of Green Club, vice president of Science Club, vice president of Students of Color of Alliance, and Tabor's ambassador for the Center for Sustainable Climate Solutions. I love hanging out with my teammates and the friends I have made on campus. What drew me to Tabor was that I did not have to end my soccer career in high school. I received a soccer and academic scholarship that would make my decision easier. I also had a conversation with a close friend who encouraged me to see this as a sign from God who was reaching out his hand to me and asking me to trust him. I came to Tabor not having a strong relationship with God, but because of the community and my teammates, coaches, professors, and friends, I am seeing God work in my life. This past year, your gifts not only provided a path to graduation through scholarships, they also provided us the tools to get there. This year, students like me did not have to worry about buying books. Instead, Thanks to the generosity of donors like you, our books were already paid for. Your gifts prepare us to be successful in the classroom so we can make a difference in the world. If you have given gifts to Tabor, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be the first person in my family to graduate from college. 
Your gifts have given me and hundreds of other students the ability to be transformed by the Christ-centered education and prepared to make a difference in our communities and the world. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store all the solution for your storage problems think about how good it feels when people really get you like the friends who come over when a big game is on the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays and everyone who knows about your special post win fist bump it's kind of like having a state farm agent like paul brooks paul is here to get to know you and understand your life so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm Agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Since 1962, the Eitzen Agency has specialized in insurance for churches, colleges, and faith-based ministries. As an independent insurance agency representing Brotherhood Mutual and other fine companies, they can find the right policy for you at the best price. For more information, call the Eitzen Agency at 800-375-2553 or go online to EitzenAgency.com. That's E-I-T-Z-E-N Agency.com. The Eitzen Agency, proudly supporting Tabor College Athletics for three generations. There's a new vibe in town. Experience it with our crazy fast internet speeds from our fiber backs network. Phew, finally, a broadband connection that can keep up with you. Need a customized solution to power your business with phone, internet, or managed services? Say hello to Vive. We're here to simplify your life with technology that works. See how at vivebroadband.com. That's V-Y-V-E broadband.com. It's time to turn your vibe on. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference.
Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming's Mini Store All or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Since 1962, the Eitzen Agency has specialized in insurance for churches, colleges, and faith-based ministries. As an independent insurance agency representing Brotherhood Mutual and other fine companies, they can find the right policy for you at the best price. For more information, call the Eitzen Agency at 800-375-2553 or go online to EitzenAgency.com. That's E-I-T-Z-E-N Agency.com. The Eitzen Agency, proudly supporting Tabor College Athletics for three generations. There's a new vibe in town. Experience it with our crazy fast internet speeds from our fiber backs network. Whew, finally, a broadband connection that can keep up with you. Need a customized solution to power your business with phone, internet, or managed services? Say hello to Vive. We're here to simplify your life with technology that works. See how at vivebroadband.com. That's V-Y-V-E broadband.com. It's time to turn your Vive on. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming's Mini Store All.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita 
at 316-721-8181. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsborough or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Since 1962, the Eitzen Agency has specialized in insurance for churches, colleges, and faith-based ministries. As an independent insurance agency representing Brotherhood Mutual and other fine companies, they can find the right policy for you at the best price. For more information, call the Eitzen Agency at 800-375-2553 or go online to EitzenAgency.com. That's E-I-T-Z-E-N Agency.com. The Eitzen Agency, proudly supporting Tabor College Athletics for three generations. There's a new vibe in town. Experience it with our crazy fast internet speeds from our fiber backed network. Whew, finally, a broadband connection that can keep up with you. Need a customized solution to power your business with phone, internet, or managed services? Say hello to Vive. We're here to simplify your life with technology that works. See how at vivebroadband.com. That's V Y V E broadband.com. It's time to turn your Vive on. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. 
Since 1962, the Eitzen Agency has specialized in insurance for churches, colleges, and faith-based ministries. As an independent insurance agency representing Brotherhood Mutual and other fine companies, they can find the right policy for you at the best price. For more information, call the Eitzen Agency at 800-375-2553 or go online to EitzenAgency.com. That's E-I-T-Z-E-N Agency.com. The Eitzen Agency, proudly supporting Tabor College Athletics for three generations. There's a new vibe in town. Experience it with our crazy fast internet speeds from our Rod Hand back here at Tabor College. Joel H. Wien Stadium alongside Bob Hebert as we get ready to kick off this second half. Just under a minute left to go as Tabor College has made their way out onto the field to kick off. Just a few stats from that uh, first half. With the score 14 to 3, Bethel on top. First downs, Bethel 10, Tabor 6. Rush yards, Bethel 25 rushes, 144 yards. Tabor 17 rushes, 22 yards. Passing yards, 64 for the Threshers, 66 for the Blue Jays. Total offensive plays, 28 for 208 yards for Bethel, 35 for 88 yards for the Tabor College Blue Jays. One fumble for the Threshers. Zero turnovers for the Blue Jays. So, Tabor College able to hang in here in that first half as we see Joe Cannon boot the ball short. Bethel falls on it about the 33-yard line, and Bethel will take possession at their own 33 as the fog has almost uh, settled in on this field, even worse than what we were seeing in the first half, Bob. Definitely, yeah. It is denser there was more fog than there was in the first half fortunately there's no rain and uh, still wet still windy the, the I think you, those first half stats the 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 Bethel ground game is the difference maker right now right, absolutely we've only have 20 yards 22 yards rushing they have much more and it's just making a big difference first play here is a rushing play for the threshers it looks like they're B back there, and it's number 40, Scurry. That's the best we've defended that play all game. Maybe there were some adjustments made at halftime, and we're, we're, we're going to be able to shut down that inside the tackles run Scurry. game. Scurry, 10 attempts, 38 yards in the first half. Shumpert Street, 37 yards. Christensen, 36. And Juarez, 26. There's the option. Option just gets loose. Come on. Could have had him right there at the beginning now. Still loose, number 12. My gosh. You got to get him down. You yep. got to get him on the ground. Had our chances at him, and uh, Hudson Adama, six foot 180 freshman from Fort Worth, Texas, just proving to be too elusive as the chain gang is hustling down the sideline, and Bethel is already under center, ready to snap again. Hand off to 14 this time on a jet sweep. Number 14 for the Threshers gets a few yards. Cameron Harrison, 5'9", mm -hmm. senior, able to get about four yards for the Threshers. Esau, one completion and three attempts in that first half. For Tabor Curry, 26 yards on six carries. Blaine, five yards on one carry. Renteria, one yard on six carries, and Johnny Avilas, one yard on one carry. Trent Quinn, nine for 18 for 66 yards in the first half. Blaine leading the way for the receivers for Tabor, five receptions, 38 yards. Another option play here, this time defended very well. Wyatt Lepke with the tackle. I believe the first time we've seen that play this game it looked like it maybe the second but much more of a true option look something more for the Tabor defense to think about in the fan <laughs> third down and two for the Threshers and Esau takes it himself and he gets down 
past the first down marker down inside the five yard line goes down about the four and it'll be first down threshers so they that's used, one of the few times where Esau's kept the ball. Yeah they used to be back as a blocker and he just followed him right up the hole. Big chunks of yardage there. Up the middle this time Christensen and he's in for a touchdown as Bethel once again, wastes no time scoring. So that's three times now in the, the first quarter. Bethel scored in the first minute. Yeah. In the second quarter, they scored in the first few, few uh, first 30 seconds in the second quarter. Now in the third quarter, they've scored in the first few minutes, or the first, basically the first few minutes as they uh, pound the ball down. Couple option plays, big runs there by the Threshers. And they'll set up for their extra point. As they go up 20, zero, 20 to 3 over the Blue Jays. Nothing fancy about that. The, the, the uh, dominance up front showing itself. Kick is up and good. We'll take a quick time out here as the Bethel College Threshers go up 21 3 over the Blue Jays. And we're back here at Joel H. Ween Stadium as Bethel College taking a 21-3 lead here in this contest. A spring football game. Tabor College has four games scheduled for this spring. This one being the first one, taking on the ranked Bethel College Threshers, 7-0 in the conference, 8-0 overall. And some of their wins have been very lopsided as we see the kick coming. High kick, it's going to be fielded there by the Blue Jays. Big run up the middle. Good field position for the Blue Jays as the kick returner gets the ball to the 34 yard line before being stopped. Ball right at the 35 yard line for the Blue Jays as Quinn brings his offense back out onto the field. Renteria in the backfield. Quinn goes under center. Tight formation by the Blue Jays. Pitch wide. Room to run this time. Player in the game, number 11, Caleb Hopp, 6'1, 190 freshman from McPherson, Kansas. Nice play, first down by the Blue Jays. You see the replay on that. Nice pitch, and uh, Hop's able to get out wide. Sealed the corner and a nice uh... sealed the corner and a nice block by the receiver on that DB. Could be the first time Hops has carried the ball in this contest. I don't remember calling his name earlier. Tabor huddles. So maybe some adjustments made there on the offense, off, offensive side of the ball for the Blue Jays at halftime. Blaine in motion, offsides, yeah, offsides. and movement. I think offsides happened before the movement. Line judge is going to talk to the head of head referee. Offsides happen first. It'll be five-yard penalty. First and five at the at, right at midfield for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays come to line with Quinn under center again. Renneria alone, alone in the backfield. Blaine in motion now comes back. 
handoff given to Renneria up the middle. And another big gain. Gets almost 10 yards for another first down for the Blue Jays. Renteria that time hit that hole hard. And, I mean, he, he was busting. You see him here. He goes through the line quick. Nobody there to stop him. He had 10 yards before anybody touched him. It's almost. a great, yeah, the, the O-line, as you see, that offensive line is downfield, and they're putting hats on people, and, uh, yeah, not a lot of room to run. Tabor, same formation now. Comes back. This time it looks like number 24, Creary. Pitch comes back to him, and similar play they, they were that they ran to Hops earlier. This time Bethel was waiting. Stops Curry in his tracks, and uh, it'll be second down and maybe lost a yard there. Second down and 11. Bethel College now five yards away from the line of scrimmage. It looks like they're going to be uh, sending their players running in here again like they do sometimes. <laughs> Never seen anything quite like it, <laughs> but they do get to the quarterback, and Quinn just throws it out of bounds. Uh, I'm not sure there was a receiver nearby, but uh, no flag on the play, nevertheless. But Curry wasn't sure what to do with that one. Avoids negative yards, which is nice, but you're right. There is, that is an unconventional uh, alignment by the Bethel defense. I Almost just looks like backyard standlot <laughs> football. I'm sure it's not. There's a there's a there's a um, method there, but it it's un, it looks unconventional without a doubt. Now they line up in a little more conventional look. Sending. Yep, we're gonna have that one blown dead. Looks like timeout was called by the Blue Jays prior to the snap. Maybe a good thing it was called, and we'll take a quick time out with them and be back here in one minute. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the They're parents who come over open. when the big game is on, the neighbors next door who always oh. bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State <laughs> Farm agent like Paul Brothers. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bump. And we're back here at the Joel H. Ween Stadium at Tabor College. Gets a first down there. Caleb Hops on the tight end drag, it looks like, comes across the field. Gets a big gain. First down for the Blue Jays. Dove for that first down. Ball was uh, kind of popped out as he hit the ground. I think the official right there calling it down because the ball had already touched the ground. So the Blue Jays maintain possession of the ball with Quinn under center. Now a little inside hand off to Curry. One, one player away from breaking something big there, Bob. One player away is right. They continued Bethel continues to just send people up the front. If you can get past if you can get a yard or two past that front line, it is a lot of space to operate. So Tabor making some adjustments at halftime on their offense, doing things just a little bit different, lining up a little bit different, uh, using their uh, H back for motion. 
bringing him all the way across sometimes taking him back the other way a little misdirection and so that's really helping the Blue Jays right now move the ball against that stout Bethel defense pass play it's open yep that that's that's where it's open it's five to six yards beyond the line of scrimmage their linebackers are vacating almost every play as they apply pressure and we can if we can have the time and get people in that space that's room to operate there's, there's yards for us to be taken and it's got to be quick it's, it's got to be quick it's that one there just barely got there in time curry open and coming across that middle and barely able to get that ball and get it tucked away before the defense was right there curry won't. Curry comes off the field right now limping a little bit i didn't see him limping when he first caught that ball but now he's going to have to go to the sideline and uh maybe have somebody look at his ankle as we get another timeout so something not gelling with the play calling and getting the plays in on time or whatever I don't, i'm not exactly sure what's happening but uh Tabor College having to call a timeout here, and uh, they're coming off the field and uh, going to get some direction from Coach Gardner or Coach Nelson there, the offensive coordinator. Looks like he's talking to them. I think the confusion was the, was the back coming out and not getting his replacement in. Uh, that could have been, yep. Better to know what you're doing than uh, not know what you're doing in this situation as Tabor has marched down the field here after the Bethel scored right away in the third quarter. Tabor now moving the ball several first downs in a row. I think some yeah, nice adjustments made by the coaching staff, seeing how to block that better, and then you definitely see a, a change in the, in the plan of attack and the result. Here we are. Bethel has no one down. It looks like we're back to the Sandlot football again. <laughs> Max pressure. Oh, wide open. Oh, he missed him. Wide open. Yeah. He he did have hops open. All he had to do is get the ball to him and uh, was unable to do that. Almost looked like a Bethel player could have picked that off for a second. It's fourth down and uh, looks like we're going to bring... Joe Cannon out to try another field goal. We're going to have to block it better than we did the last one. This one's even further. No. Yeah, it is further back. This one's from the 36-yard line. That's a 46-yarder. and it's, 46 yards. Trying to, the wind is still looking straight out of the east. Ball's down. Kick is up. It's low and it's wide right. Wide right. That was a low kick that just cleared the uh, <laughs> cleared the line. Barely, yeah. Not a lot of height to it, but it. So Tabor moving the ball until that last possession. Uh, things just weren't clicking on offense. That last possession had a chance there with Quinn. Quinn had hops open down the sideline. That would have had to. That ball would have had to have been placed, uh, got out there quickly and uh, placed right on the money, but uh, there was an opportunity there. Now Esau will bring his team back out on the field. He's no, he's dropping back and throwing long, and he overshoots by a couple yards. Fortunately for the Blue Jays, pass intended. <coughs> intended for Tanner Gallier, the intended receiver. I vi I, my, my visual says Bethel is a little bigger. I'm looking at the roster and the weights on the Bethel offensive line, and they are bigger. I'm, I'm seeing 260, 275, 265, 265, 270, and so forth. We got them, we got 300 down there in the we do. nose guard or tackle. I guess I'm not sure what, where he's lined up if he's in the right over the center or just in that A gap. Little hand nice, off there. Nice job by the yeah. Tabor defense. We'll hand off to the big back again there, and uh, number one Christensen has nowhere to go. Gets maybe a yard, yard and a half. So third and long. That's the position. If you're a defensive coordinator, that's the position you want to be in. Bethel has not faced this often this game. Let's see how they call that play. It should not be a dive up the middle. So I'm looking for something <laughs> a little different. First, they well, can they, get, they've they, done very been very successful with the the option play this uh, 
starting this half and so we'll see what happens here and that's and exactly what option. we see and Tabor does a great job there initial contact by number 26 for the Blue Jays on the corner Brooks Gardner linebacker finished off by Lepke they bring that a back up the middle the backside B back uh, I'm sorry, the B back up the middle, the backside A, get, A back trails to receive the pitch, and they run it, they run that well. Well defended by the Blue Jays. Punt team in for the Threshers. Punt is away. Oh, there's a roughing the punter. Un totally unnecessary. <laughs> uh, they are going to call it too, aren't they? Did he, did he is it roughing, the, it, was it uh, roughing, or is it just running into? Running, it's, it's not... Is it the five yard or the fifteen yard? It looks like a, it should be a five yard, the five yarder. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Fourth and four. They oh, got, they I, got, forgot, they got, I forgot <laughs> it was fourth and four. Well, that's a. Oh, just a just tough break there for the Blue Jays. Yeah, a, a, a not the right angle taken by the um, defenders rushing the punter at all, and they simply ran into him. Now, tough break there for the the Blue Jays as Bethel picks up the first down on the penalty, and Esau will bring his offensive team members back out onto the field. This time, it looks like B back right up the middle gets about five or six yards before he's stopped. So that action was jet sweep potentially to the backside. A back did not hand it off, and then the B back up the middle picks up, yeah, as you said, six yards. Yep. Delancey in the game right now for the Threshers as their B back or full back. Fumble. And a fumble, and it looks like Tabor has it. Delancey unable to corral that one going up the middle. Tabor College picks up the ball and they'll get the ball back. So uh, the roughing the kicker does not hurt. Tabor College actually maybe helps them in some ways. I mean, they get the ball in better field position than they would have had it otherwise. It'll be just across midfield, about the 46 47. And I was, we could see that with the fog has lifted. Delancey never had that ball in his stomach. I mean, it just never got there. Never got there. The turnover, yeah, as you said, excellent field position for the Blue Jays. So how many? Okay, so that's are we up to three or four turnovers by the Threshers now? We're not. We're a long ways from twelve. <laughs> Max pressure. This should just be open all day. Bethel sends so many people. Just this quick six-yard stop route, and it's open. Give the quarterback three seconds. And get someone behind those linebackers, and there is—it's vacant. They have a vacancy. They have put yeah. vacancy signs in the middle of that defense. <laughs> no net on the reception. Come, come attack us! What's yeah. the, we're leaving this open, and they're betting they can get to the quarterback before we can get it five yards, six yards behind beyond the line of scrimmage. This time, Renteria and Curry both in the backfield. Quinn under center hands off to Curry. Curry had mm, some room. Boy, thought he was going to get to the first down. Then the Bethel's defense. Right there. A lot of room if he evades that tackle. Third and two for the Blue Jays is they now have a opportunity to keep the ball in their possession. Plays run in by a couple wideouts. Quinn gets the play. Spread formation, one back. Shotgun formation for Quinn along with Renteria right next to him. Yeah. And the ball was thrown low to wide receiver. Number 80, Steven Anderson. That's the we I seem like the Tabor coaches have are beginning to attack that that area five, six yards beyond the, the behind the line of scrimmage as Bethel simply vacates that area, hoping they can apply enough pressure to uh, prevent anyone from throwing the ball. 
if Tabor can just give him a couple seconds and throw a good pass, Rod, that's a completion. That's a first down. Jackson comes out. Hops comes in. Blaine also in. Pitch out wide to Hops. Nice run, and Hops dives and does get the first down on fourth and three. So it looked like Bethel might stop Hops. I've, I've been impressed with Hops this it's running second hard. half. Yeah, running hard. That was a great effort I thought as well. I thought they might chase him down, and he turned the corner, got the first down. Tabor comes to the line again, this time Quinn under center with Renteria getting the ball. Nice move, Renteria going strong, breaking tackles, gets down to the 20-yard line. That's another player I've been impressed with, too, in this contest. I mean, I know if we looked at the stats, he had six rushes for one yard in the first half. Some of those, uh, I think, coming on the fact that there were some few runs where there were losses, but watch him run, and when he, when he hits... Uh, he hits seems, the hole hard. He does, and it seems like he hits full speed quickly. Yeah. Nice. Now, two backs. We had two backs. I think we hit the hole fast. Again, Bethel is applying this pressure. You get a gap. You get. You make it past that line, and there is. There's. There they. They keep bringing all these blitzes. It is amazing to me. This time again, Renteria evades a couple tackles, gets about two yards, but it pretty much all Renteria. There wasn't much of a hole there, and he made as much out of that as he could. Second and nine. Time of possession favors the Blue Jays by quite a bit, I think, in this contest. Not exactly sure what that is. The stats didn't really show it correctly at half, but uh, clock counting down here with uh, 343 left in this third quarter. There was a nice, slant. Nice slant inside, picked off. The it ball looks, was thrown behind. That's a great it, catch. Great job by Nonet there to, to reach down and pick that up. I really think, Rod, that play and similar plays like that should be open. They've been open all game. I mean, the, the, the Bethel simply is not – they simply think they can apply pressure before you can get the ball to them. If, if, if you can run a quick slant, run a – Get the tight end five, six yards in that area over the middle. They are vacating a lot of space. So far, their gamble has paid off. It has paid off. <laughs> maybe the, maybe we, we will, the Blue Jays will figure out how to block that and, mm -hmm. and figure out a way to give it just enough time to get those receivers in those open spaces. Little pistol formation. Looks like there's going to be offsides again, unless it's movement, but it looks like offsides Bethel. Nice play there by... Either way, it's going to be a first down. It looks like Tabor got the first down on the carry, and they also would get it on the penalty. So either way, Tabor's going to be inside the five-yard line, I believe. Here you see the replay. Looks like offsides right there before he came back. It seems like such a risky move to, to do that on defense where you're always standing up and, and uh, trying to guess the snap count. I, I get the idea, the concept. Trying to guess, trying to apply that pressure, get yeah. through before we, yeah. Um. Quinn under center, hands off to Curry. Curry leveled it immediately after he uh, got the ball from Quinn. Just really fortunate he was able to hold on to the ball there. Second goal for the Blue Jays. 2.32 left in this third quarter. Blaine comes in the game along with Hobbs to bring a play into Quinn. Shaw, the uh, game clock running down, already down to five seconds. Tabor's used up. Two timeouts already. Gets it off with one second. Pass up, and there'll be interference in the end zone. It'll be uh, the ball placed, I think, at the one-yard line or whatever, but it's uh, obvious pass interference on the Threshers. As you see the tight end kind of running in, running into, I don't know, there was kind of two 
It looks like almost two uh, offensive player receivers in the same area there. The tight end and the receiver all running into a Bethel defender. Ball's placed just outside the... That's at the two-yard line on the hash, on the left hash. First and goal for the Blue Jays. Curry comes into the game. Spread formation. Two backs. Looks like they're in an eye. I think we're running it up the middle. <laughs> okay. we, have a, we have a full back. We have a tail back. 205 left in this third quarter. Tabor down 21 3 to the Threshers once again. And I don't know how many times we've said it. There's probably at least three times in this game so far that we've said Tabor really needs a touchdown. I'll say it again. Okay. Tabor really <laughs> needs a touchdown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is twice now we've been inside. Weren't we inside the five yard line before? Seems like we were at the five or six before, at least at the five, inside the five. And uh, came away empty, and so, well, we came away with three, but three. Uh, we, we really wanted seven. High formation, Quinn under center, ball snapped, given off to... He walks in. Yeah. Nice Renteria. Nice play. Renteria saw that it was blind. Uh, there was nowhere to go in the middle, and just bounced it outside. And bounced it outside. Yes, first, he did. first touchdown of his career at Tabor College. Renteria scores for the Blue Jays. Let's look at that again. Pulled a. Uh, it looks like a guard pulled out a little G action, a fullback lead, and bounced it outside. Cannon in for the extra point. And we've got another penalty. False start. Looking, uh, the head official looks to be looking over at the Bethel sideline for whether or not he wants to accept the penalty. I'm not sure what the. Doesn't seem like that's too hard of a decision. That'll back Tabor up five. No, should be no problem for Joe Cannon. And we'll set up again. Ball's down. And... That's the second time. That's the was second that, time that guy's come off the... Uh, he blocked. Was that blocked or was that... That was blocked. Was that ball ever put down? It looked almost... That was blocked. Three. Oh, there he is. Came yeah. off the edge. He's the guy that blocked that field goal first uh, in the first half. They're not blocking the edge. So Tabor College could have pulled within 11, but it'll be 12. 21-9 I mean, with two minutes left in this third quarter. It seemed like the last time he came off the other edge. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just, maybe the field's reversed. Maybe. Field's, re field's, re field's reversed. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it was, it's the same. Yeah, same, same corner. Same coming corner. Coming off the same edge. Yeah. Uh, unfortunate for the Blue Jays that that happened, but they do get points on the board in the way of a touchdown, and uh, that's got to feel good for that offense because that offense was moving the ball against the Threshers. Uh, imp impressive drive. They've found how to attack this defense, I believe, and uh, the execution was there. Yeah, very nice job. And our defense seems to have solved a little bit of the... Uh, the riddle up the, front. The, the, riddle, the riddle up front, yeah, that's exactly right. I've seen a little bit more of that uh, of that true triple option out of Bethel as we're, as we're starting to stuff that B-back in between the tackles. So... If we can uh, contain the edge, I think we it should be an interesting, uh, interesting quarter. And in two minutes here left in the game, we need to stop here, get the ball, and drive again, and then we've got a contest. Short kick goes out of bounds, and that'll be Bethel's ball, I believe, at the 35-yard line. You know that bounce, I don't know. 
that's the flag is probably the ball that uh, was kicked out of bounds so I'm going to guess Bethel's going to go ahead and just decline that penalty take the ball to 35 and here comes their offense so decent field position for the Threshers as we go into the last two minutes here of the third quarter Tabor defense out there hoping to hold the Threshers and go into this last 15 minutes only down 12. Yeah, I'm not sure what why are you moving I don't I'm, I guess I'm confused now because usually when the ball's kicked out of bounds it goes to the 35 I was thinking now it's at the, the 38 38 so I'm not exactly sure I have to brush up on my rules because <laughs> it seems odd Ball's handed off inside to the b back and he's scurry and he's down after gaining only two yards. Bethel's going to go hurry up offense. So two, the holding him to two is better than that five or six they've been <laughs> exactly. getting. So yeah, second and long, and now we have uh, yeah a little more, uh, a little more interesting here. Nice job by the again. I think they made a nice adjust. They must have. They've made some adjustments at the half, and they are executing better up front. Now we, perhaps we see more triple option from Bethel. Triple option means more potential turnover. More potential turnover, exactly. Esau gets under center. Hand it off to Scurry. Scurry goes all the way down. Just short of the first down, I believe. Take my book starter. Brings up third and two. Third and two for the Threshers. It's a big back. He hard, he runs hard. <laughs> and you want to know how big he was again? Two twenty-five. Six foot two twenty-five. And he's one of three. <laughs> Jet sweep. First down. Mm by the Threshers. Now Lepke on the corner able to tackle the wide out or A-back. Shumpert Street on that carry. Gets two plus a few more. Bethel now at the 46 yard line. Clock running down. 26 seconds to go in this third quarter as the offense is for the Threshers looking at the sideline. Esau calling out the plays. Tight formation. Little inside handoff to 24. Who gets loose. 21 on the tackle. It's that jet sweep. They ran the two jet sweeps in a row. One this way, one, one to this side, one to the other. James Lang on the tackle. Harrison on the run for and that'll be the end of the third quarter Tabor College down 12 21 9 we'll take a break here come back for the fourth quarter estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we're back here at Joel H. Wayne Stadium in Hillsborough, Kansas. The fog is lifted. Just kind of looked up a little bit and noticed the fog is lifted as Bethel College driving right now. Hands off inside to the B back. This time Christensen. He's pulled down after a short gain. It'll be second down and it looks like maybe eight. So Tabor College defense now is going to have to really bow their necks to keep Bethel College out of the end zone here at the beginning and if it's uh, if this quarter follows suit with the other quarters Bethel scores within the first <laughs> first minute I shouldn't have said that yeah Bethel College has scored within the first minute of each quarter it feels like or seems like and and uh, this time Esau under center Christensen gets the handoff for no he fakes it this time Esau keeps it gets around the corner for a few yards We've only seen him carry the ball two, three times. Picked up, what, three, you know, four, four, five yards? Too many. Too many. Third down and it's Two downs three. here, Rod, I would say, are very oh, important for this yeah. game. These two, they, they, I, I would think if Bethel does not get the first down, they will go for it on fourth. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, two, two plays here will be, well, this is the most, the next play is the most important play. We'll see what happens here. This time a handoff to Christensen, and he goes up the middle for a first down for the Threshers. So Tabor College defense really uh, being pressured here in this early going of this fourth quarter. I don't see Bethel throwing the ball here. I think they're just going to continue with their uh, same ground, ground game and uh, keep... Keep pounding it inside. Yeah, same MO. They are bunched. Oh, man. Off tackle. <laughs> <laughs> be back. It's called be back off tackle right or be back off tackle left. And once again, uh, Scurry, 672 yards. He's one of the be backs. Uh, Christensen, 373 yards. This is their third back in now. And 265 for their other B-back. So, they've so I, you know, that play, it looked like it was going for more. They held them to two, a, a two-yard gain. Yeah, not bad. Not bad, yeah. Very not, very good very good execution. Bethel taking their time now. No hurry up here as Esau's right under center. Gets the handoff. Rolls out. He is going to throw, which uh, oh, surprises me a little bit. And he evades several people. Number six was the first guy he evaded, who's still down. Now finally gets up and is going to try to hobble off the the field. He's been coming off limping. At least this is the fourth, thir fourth, fifth time. So if something is na a nagging injury that he gets fixed up, goes back in, and now uh, looks like he is in pain. And that's Zach Roth, who would have been a... Um, High school classmate, I believe, or no, that's not, not right. He uh, he was from Bishop Carroll. Just has that Heston name. I thought maybe he was from Heston, like Esau. Esau under center again. That's a that's a called quarterback keeper. Tabor stops it. I mean, yeah. played, defended well. Defended really well there by the. Defense, fourth down now. Does that mean uh, Bethel College goes for it on fourth down? Or do they kick an extra, or they kick a, basically what would be an extra point, but a field goal? And it looks like they're staying on the field. Huge, huge play here for Tabor's defense. He saw under center. We're going to probably see a penalty. And I think offsides on the Blue Jay front. So the, the split end out here to the right tapped his helmet, I think indicating, hey, I, you know, I'm open here, and they threw the fade to him, defended well by Tabor, but as you said, a penalty inside uh, negates that. Galliard at 6-3 going against the defense <coughs> out here, number 21. This is a costly mistake. It's uh, fourth it's and four. Big... We stop them, and now they have a first down inside the five-yard line. Of course, James Lang listed at 6'1", so not giving up that much height. But, like you said, penalty negates everything anyway. First down for the Threshers. First and goal at the inside the five. Penalties can be a killer. That it was unfortunate. 
to say the least. We need to turn over. Esau keeps it, dives in, doesn't get it, doesn't quite get there, down about the one yard line. And here comes a new, uh, a new, uh, not a new, <laughs> the, the, their big B back. Scurry in the game. Bring it in the beef. Yep, 225 pounds. Tabor Kraut hoping for a turnover down inside the one yard line. Could be a quarterback sneak, could be a handoff to Scurry. I think Scurry will. And you're it. right. He's in. Yep. So that, uh, yeah, that offside was really costly. Yep. Bethel College goes on top, scoring this time. We held them out. We held them out the first couple minutes of that quarter. Oh, yeah. But they do get a touchdown, come on for the extra point. Try to make this a 28 to 9 game. Kick is up and good. We'll take a break here. Come back for the pressure kickoff. See if the Blue Jay offense can get something going. Since 1962, the Eitzen Agency has specialized in insurance for churches, colleges, and faith-based ministries. As an independent insurance agency representing Brotherhood Mutual and other fine companies, they can find the right policy for you at the best price. For more information, call the Eitzen Agency at 800-375-2553 or go online to EitzenAgency.com. That's E-I-T-Z-E-N Agency.com. The Eitzen Agency, proudly supporting Tabor College Athletics for three generations. And Bethel sets the kickoff here. 28, 9, 10, 21 left in this fourth quarter. So Tabor holding Bethel. And when I say holding Bethel, they're holding Bethel to one touchdown per quarter. And that's a lot better than uh, some teams have done this year <laughs> against Bethel. They put up 78 against uh, a conference opponent or maybe even Mid-American Nazarene earlier in the year. So they can score in bunches. Well, you think that first that first touchdown was was a was an inter, a defensive interception? Uh, yeah. So the Tabor defense has done a, I would say, ooh, ooh. must be a face mask. Or uh, there, flags coming from everywhere. Uh, there was some uh, there's some laundry out on the field because there's about three of them flying in at once, all at the same time. Not exactly sure what happened. Interestingly enough, I got a text message from a former uh, All-American defensive end, Evan Sprayberry, telling me about this defense that Bethel runs. And he said it's uh, something that uh, other schools are picking up on. Uh, the whole defense is built around it. There's a method to it, a lot of thinking behind who comes where. And uh, he's learning it himself and uh, implementing it uh, at Hennessy High School. Hmm. Hennessy, Oklahoma. So thanks, uh, Evan, for enlightening us old guys up here in the booth. Appreciate that. It's Yeah, it, certainly there's a method because they're covering the gaps needed. It's something that perhaps Buddy Ryan in a 46 defense <laughs> might implement, applying all this pressure. Yeah. Hand off inside. Quinn hands off. Short yardage uh, gain. I couldn't really tell who picked up the ball. I think Renteria, as Blaine checks in, brings in a play to Quinn. And Curry, I think it was, I thought Curry at one point was limping off the field, but I think it was more of a gallop. Well, I thought the same. I looked like a limp. Yeah. He's been off on the training table once or twice this game, and uh, but yeah, continues to play well. Shotgun trips to the left. Quinn lets one go, and one-handed grab on the sideline 
Bind on net as he stays in bounds right past the uh, 45 yard line. Did you see that catch? That was, uh, I want to see the replay on that one. That was acrobatic. So here's Clint Great. letting the ball fly and one handed grab being well guarded. Wow. Was the defense brings, holding his other arm? Like, yeah. I mean, there should be pass interference at a minimum, right? You're only getting one arm up. That's what defensive backs are taught, though, aren't they? To hold that one arm down, or at least. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Nice play there. Fantastic. Clint play. now, again, getting pressure <laughs> and barely in shotgun formation. He can barely get the ball and get it thrown before he's being just sacked or or, or pressured he's immensely. Being, he's being pressured <laughs> without a doubt. He's going to need an ice bath after this game. But doing a good job of getting that ball off, just couldn't quite get it to his receiver. Led him a little bit too much. Second down and 10. Tabor College. Big play there to Nonette. Nonette now split on this side by himself. Curry in motion. Now gets a pitch. Loses the pitch. And he's going to fall on it. Maybe. And it's no. Bethel's ball. So turnover there. And looks like Curry was uh, heading upfield before he had the ball that time. Lost it. Bethel picks it up, and so it'll be Bethel's ball. First turnover, turnover of the game for the Blue Jays. Well, we'll see if the defense can respond here to the challenge and uh, keep Bethel out of the end zone. Esau under center, Scurry with the handoff, and he gets about five yards a pop. Uh, they want to keep the clock running, I would imagine, as much as possible. Um, Control the... Uh, yeah, at this point in the game, the clock is your friend, and I'm guessing you're right. They're just going to keep pounding it uh, the way they've done most of the game. The question is, will Tabor respond with more pressure? Pass play. A tight end open down the middle. And incomplete. I think that's the, uh, yeah, where you, if, you, if you're going to bring more pressure, then they can uh, step back. and. But Tabor's really responded well. There has been very few big pass plays, and right. Tabor right there on defense oh, yeah. that time again. Play, they responded, I, yeah, incredibly well. Third down, I think again. This is a uh, this is a this is a you know important play in this contest here. If we can get the ball back, can we can we score? Is there enough time to <laughs> score? That's the question. But we need to stop. We need to, we need to stop here. Hand off to Scurry and up the middle. He gets enough for the first down before he meets a wall of Blue Jays. But like I said, just enough for a first down. Chains are moving and the clock is running. Yeah, I'm not sure why Bethel would throw the ball here at this point in the game. I think they would run, just run four down. Run, if they have to run four downs, they'd run four downs. Little reverse action there. Tabor right on it. Nowhere to go. Loss of two. Defended well at the perimeter. Tabor right there on that reverse sweep action. Plenty of Blue Jays there on that play. Twenty seconds left on the play clock. Are they going to run more clock, or how long will they? Uh... <laughs> no, he's, not... he's saw under center. Christensen fake to Christensen. Now Blue Jays all over this play too. So looks like the Blue Jays have uh, figured something out defensively here, as Bethel has nowhere to go. Loss of five. If I'm if I'm Bethel, I'm not in a hurry to 
snap the ball, I believe I'm running the if I'm running the ball, which they are, I'm, I'm letting that play clock run down to uh, close to zero. Snap, Christensen up the, up the middle, middle, and he's still loose. And he gets all the way past the first down marker, and he gets into the, he gets past the first down marker, but there is a flag. So new life for Tabor College. I was going to point out with uh, last fall, Bethel College put up 34 in their first contest, 55, 51, 83, 78, 38, 39, and 34. So I know some coaches say there's no such thing as a moral victory, but uh, to come out here this spring in the first game of the spring football season and right now with Bethel at 28 and your defense only gave up three of those touchdowns only 21 points out of the 28 They've that's, done it. that's almost a moral victory it's in a some moral ways. victory it's an outstanding job it gives you hope for the next games this spring cj hill doing a doing a great job running that defense it looks like we're going to get a timeout with 608 left in this contest Tabor down nine to 28 we'll take a quick break be right back there's a new vibe in town. Experience it with our crazy fast internet speeds from our fiber backs network. Whew. Finally, a broadband connection that can keep up with you. Need a customized solution to power your business with phone, internet, or managed services? Say hello to Vive. We're here to simplify your life with technology that works. See how at vivebroadband.com. That's V-Y-V-E broadband.com. It's time to turn your vibe on. Left guard, 325, center, 265, 255. Wouldn't you be tempted at some point to... I mean, just almost do like Bethel's doing and just... Oh, it was? Yeah, if you're... Yeah, but you, yeah that's what you think. Yeah, you could, but man, are they going to run that option or they're going to... I know. They're going to, you know, this, yeah, the fact that they can run it so effectively... But if they between don't... the tackles, with just a... There's no lead back or anything. I mean, it's just a, it's just not a you know I mean? Same with their defense, right? And we're back. Here is uh, doing a little analysis here and just hoping that Tabor College can uh, jam that offensive line and uh, try to keep Bethel from just keeping uh, pounding it down the middle. And uh, we'll see what happens here. Third and about 20 for the Threshers. Hand off up the middle again. <laughs> we just well, we really were almost. It looked like I had a lot of people back. Uh, Tabor did. Yeah. Not a prevent defense, but but really, you know, playing because of a third and long. And so right. there there was that initial opening there, and we converged. You know, gave him five six, but now it's fourth fourth and long, fourth and nine. Fourth and long, and uh, Bethel will keep their offense out on the field. It is a temptation, I think, to just want to bring everybody every play when you <laughs> when you think they're going to hand off. But as soon as they don't hand off and run the option, then uh, then you're in big trouble. So Tabor now moving around, doing a little bit of uh, so shake, shake, shake and bake. Same look, <laughs> the same look there. Good job. Oh, it, it, got good. him down. Nice job. Yeah. Get him on the ground. There you go. Good job by both teams. Good job by Esau to get the ball out of his hands before he got sacked. A good job by the defense to uh, take down the receiver before he could get to the first down. So Tabor takes over on downs. 5.18 left in this fourth quarter. Just a little cat and mouse game. Yeah. Quinn hand, yep, looks like a handoff inside, and it's going to go nowhere. Should have been blown dead. I think it was blown dead. Quinn inside, barely got the handoff off to his running back before uh, that play even got going. Now Quinn, a little bit gimpy as Renteria comes into the game. 
Quinn's going to fight that off. Tabor Huddles gets ready for their next play. Three yard loss on that one as Tabor comes out now with uh, double backs surrounding Quinn in the backfield. He's going to throw and complete to the tight end Usher. Usher gets a few yards after the catch. I'm the Lone Ranger now as Bob Hebert has had to leave the booth. He's got a wedding in town to go to, but uh, sure appreciate Bob joining me up here today in the booth and bringing some football knowledge that I don't have and a uh, little few of the X's and O's that uh, he remembers from days long ago. Pistol formation for the Blue Jays. Twins to the left, single to the right. Quinn drops back, throws. That one intended for no net. And it'll bring up fourth down for the Blue Jays, and they will kick it away. Chiavetta will drop back for the Blue Jays. Done a great job punting for the Blue Jays today. Good kick fielded there by the Threshers. Gets past one now. Pulled down by a host of Blue Jays. As the Bethel College offense will come back out on the field. Led by their senior quarterback, Zach Esau, six foot one ninety five out of Heston, Kansas. Esau now under center, hands off inside, this time it looks like it's going to be their third be back in the game. Delancey. So Scurry, Christensen, and Delancey, the three B-backs carrying the bulk of the load for the Threshers. Where do you, do you go to KCAC or NAI? See, another handoff up the middle. Delancey again gets the first down. Clock will stop temporarily as we're under three minutes now in this contest. Threshers up 28-9. I think everything today got postponed. I think that's the only game. Single receiver, tight formation. Another handoff to Delancey. Hit hard. And goes down. Not before a big gain, though. Jordan Suckow, six foot one ninety five junior from Brentwood, California, comes in and delivers a blow. Delancey kind of brushed off that one and uh, but brought down shortly. About an eight yard gain, second down and two for the Threshers. Esau now drops back to pass, goes long, wide open, and that'll be a touchdown for the Threshers, number thirty three. For the Threshers, scoring the touchdown on that pass play, Braden Francis, 5'10", Jr., 185 out of Sedgwick, Kansas. So Bethel College putting another score up on the Blue Jays here in the last two minutes of the game. On a long pass play, Francis just left alone there by the defense. Extra point kick is up and good. We'll take a break and be back in a minute for the kickoff from the Threshers.
We're back here at Joel H. Wayne Stadium as Bethel College now leading with less than two minutes, 35-9 against the Tabor College Blue Jays. Kickoff by the Threshers. Fielded about the 10-yard line. Good run back about to the 30-yard line by... Special teams player Jacob File, 5'6", 155-pound freshman from McPherson, Kansas. Doing a good job on the kickoff returns today for the Blue Jays. Face mask penalty will move the ball out to the 45-yard line as the Tabor College offense comes back out on the field. Hopefully can move the ball here in this last two minutes. <coughs> See if they can put another score up. Just for good measure. Quinn under center. Offsides. It'll be a handoff anyway. Bl uh, whistle blows everything dead as Curry was... Uh, Thinking he could go all the way there. So Bethel College will now go to 8 0 in the conference as they're offsides here. Penalty is marked off. 8 0 in the conference, or uh, so 9 0 overall. Remain in good standing in the uh, NAIA national rankings. And probably most important for Bethel College, they will break the 10-game losing streak to Tabor College Blue Jays here in football, in the football world. Handoff inside, this time to Renteria, brought down by the Threshers, just short of the first down. It'll be second down and short for the Blue Jays. A lot of times in a rivalry, the rival, rivalry tends to not be a rivalry anymore when one team dominates so much like Tabor has here in the last 10 years. But uh, it's Tabor Bethel is always a rivalry no matter what. Handoff inside. Renteria fighting for the extra yards. Looks like he might have got enough momentum to get that first down. And he does. As Tabor College will keep the ball. Clock will start as soon as the ball is placed. Minute seven left in this contest. A lot of moving around on offense for the Blue Jays. People moving, uh, receivers going from right to left. And the clock runs out or timeout's called. Delay of game on the Blue Jays. That'll move it back five yards. It'll be first and 15. Game clock goes back to 25. <laughs> Quinn looking to the sideline, making sure everybody knows what play is supposed to be run here. Ball is finally set. Quinn takes a snap, long pitch back to hops hops goes and gets the five yards back back to the original line of scrimmage for the blue jays and clock running down now under 20 curry comes into the game and this could be the last play for the blue jays if they even get it off and it looks like they're going to try to get this off clock now down to five four Snap is made. 
Quinn keeps the ball, scrambles, puts, takes a knee, and gets tackled anyway. Penalty. Flag goes up, and there's just a little bit of a scrum there. In college, once you're on your knee, you don't need to get hit. It's not like the pros. He took a knee and was just going to go down, and uh, players will now come off the field. The traditional handshakes are usually waved here during COVID times, and so that is the ball game, folks. Tabor College making a good showing here. Their defense really strong today against a really powerful offense of the Bethel College Threshers. Bethel breaks the 10-game losing streak in football to the Blue Jays going on top today, 35-9. Good showing by a young Tabor College offense and defense here. New quarterback, some new players on both sides of the ball, and uh, that's going to do it. At Joel, for Joel H. Ween Stadium and for Rod Ham and uh, for Bob Hebert, who had to leave a little early, thanks for joining us. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated Ford.